hosting a number of faunal communities, the folivore, florivore, frugivores, etc. You see, the set of three dominants are varying. In terms of conservation, this is very important because each site is quite unique. Although I told there are a total of about a thousand sites in various stages of uh, undisturbed to much disturbed, but each site is so unique, no two sites are replicas. And hence conservation each of each and every site is of equal importance. Next slide, please. Next, please. Uh, so this is just to show how much entanglement of lioness uh, in the dense uh, tropical riverine forests. Uh, next slide, please. They are highly productive. We have a large scale program in the Eastern Ghats, uh, Southern Eastern Ghats forest, one of the world's large scale study of 55 hectare published in uh, Systematics and Biodiversity, Cambridge. Next slide, please. Unfortunately, they are not permanent plots. Such a large scale study, but that was a DBT funded large scale program from a different angle and unfortunately not permanently tagged. As of today on Woody Climbers of the World, we have four source books. The first by Charles Darwin himself. Second, Biology of Wines by Puds and Mooney, from both published by Cambridge University Press. The next, next slide, please. We have our own book with the 32 chapter book with the three chapters from two from us and four from our teams of uh, researchers pooling global data for global synthesis from the tropics. And in this 32 chapter book, various aspects are covered. And we have uh, by 2015, our own book, uh, Biodiversity of Linus, three chapters from us and two of the 10 topics, two from each continent, giving the state of art of the Lyama science scenario in this uh, spring of publication. Next slide, please. Linus are anti-clockwise, mostly anti-clockwise direction twining, and they follow various mechanisms of uh, twining, hook climber, tendril climber, root climber like pepper and uh, uh, beetle vine, et cetera, thorny and non-thorny stragglers. They follow one or more than one mechanism for climbing to reach the canopy and highly productive for both leaf and reproductive resources, useful to animal communities. Next slide, please. As I told you, Lyana produced resources are used by a number of faunal communities in Asian, African, and American forests. Next slide, please. Here in the next slide, you will see the, how the animal communities are making use of, next slide, please. Animal communities are making use of the physical provisions of the liners as their cable cars. So their uh, uh, metro train, for bio metro train for them, the various primates and other life forms which make use of the canopies, they don't have come to the ground for many purpose. Many of these are arboreal primates. So they make use as a space and for mobility and food resources and dwelling. This is from the book Ecology of Linus. Next slide, please. They are of many uses, not only to, as resources to animals, but also to human communities. They provide a number of resources, including one of these important uh, Pyrenecantha volubilis cassinaceae from the East Coast forest, very common. And this fruit is an anti-cancer drug yielding uh, material. And research is in the final stage with, uh, you know, uh, University of Agricultural Sciences, UAS Bengaluru, Dr. Uma Shankar's team. I hope in the final stage of, uh, you know, drug, anti-cancer drug from the fruit of this uh, highly productive, quite a common lina, a thin, wiry lina, but look at the leaf crop it can produce, half a centimeter diameter stem, but look at the canopy. This is from the uh, 15 came from Kadalur, the forest that I have shown earlier. Next slide, please. Pyrenecantha volubilis, dioecious. 
Like in tropics, we have been seeing the situation, temperate forests are equally targeted, like you see in the New Zealand forest. Next slide, how they are being converted for various purposes. Next, please, uh, for fruit orchards, kiwi fruit. Next slide, please. So, large areas of temperate forests converted for kiwi fruit orchard, wherein we are getting, the, from where we are getting kiwi fruits. But it is now cultivated in Lucknow also. Next slide, please. Forests have a lot of functions to perform and here the point that we are trying to better understand is how biodiversity in tropical and temperate forest situation and how systems are interrelated plant, 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 animal, animal, animal and all with the microbe and the environmental factors. This complex web of interactions are very difficult to understand but this would help a lot in better managing these forests and in framing conservation programs effectively. So next slide, please. I'm not detailing. So particularly as animal resources, leaf eaters, pollination purpose, seed dispersal and nutrient cycling. All these needs to be in a holistic manner understood. Teams of researchers need to be working on long time to better understand the forest total functional ecology to have them better maintained for useful to both humans and wild biota as well. Next slide, please. That too, with the changing scenario. You look at the leaf eater, the moth larva, large ficus hispida leaf. In two hours time frame, in on a rainy season night, we photographed. So the whole leaf converted to lace in two hours. Next slide, you see the moth larva. This fellow, two hour job, a leaf is converted to lace. So many of these, and we have studied uh, one of our scholars, Anil from Calicut, as a research scholar with us, studied how these uh, about 185 plant species of tropical dry green forest utilized by various leaf, flower, fruit eaters as resource ecology study. Next slide, please. So, Pollination we have been talking about, Darwin's orchid, that co-evolution. Next slide. Darwin's orchid ever since uh, found. Next slide, please. And how co-evolved with Darwin's moth. So here is a picture in Nature Journal, Darwin's orchid and Darwin's moth. The next slide shows you the picture. Darwin's moth ever since discovered 1802 and described. Then 1907, Darwin's moth was identified. By 1997, we understood that this orchid is pollinated by Darwin's moth. With the pollen picture, videos taken, everything. Thus, a 200-year time frame to understand. Next slide. So that is about pollination story. One example like that, many examples. Seed dispersal. So uh, Malabar uh, hornbill, how they disperse seeds of nutmeg, jatikai or miristika family. And next slide gives you both in American, next slide please, in Asian, African and American forests, how much, the, the previous one? Uh, American, African hornbills, yeah, and uh, in American and uh, Asian and African forest hornbills, and in American forests, uh, toucans are involved in dispersing meristicaceae. So that's about the tropical world's high interconnectivity, but one needs to have large scale, long term studies by teams of people to understand all these. The Asian, African, respective hornbills and their food species, particularly during the breeding season. Tropical American toucans, their meristicaceae. So 400 species of meristicaceae, they require their own hornbills slash toucans to disperse their seeds. This is how the interconnections in tropical forests before we need to, we understand the totality of everything. Tropical forests, we are losing at 
higher rate. Next slide, please. Coming to the very briefly, because the various uh, other speakers will be talking about uh, marine. So carbon accumulation in marine sediments, uh, uh, so blue carbon sequestration. And uh, next slide, you will see how much particularly the seaweeds and sea grasses, uh, coral reef systems, which are very sensitive are capable of high productivity. Next slide, please. And uh, cater to various faunal communities. Like Forest Geo, you can log on to Marine Geo, wherein you have a number of programs in various world's sites, Marine Global Earth Observatory programs. It is again a network. You have home initiative research people and places you can log on to. And Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute is coordinating many of these, like CTFS, again, the Smithsonian organization. So you can log on to, to get to know and look at the opportunities that are available, research programs, a range of them from geology to molecular biology, immunology, and new drug discovery from various marine biota. Next slide, please. In the Gulf of Mannar region, during our seagrass work, they are one of the highly productive systems in the world. Uh, as you see in this uh, Pamban Bridge, next slide, you'll see how much these sea grasses are productive, like land grasses, sea grasses, uh, catered to the resources of, next slide, the sea cows depend on the sea grasses. Uh, yes, okay, so next slide, you'll see how much green turtles are dependent on the turtle grass, uh, Thalassia. So these are, this is how systems are interlinked. They depend on these resources and becomes it becomes our prime duty to conserve them for the sake of species survival and ecosystems to be maintained in a stage supportive to all of us. Next slide. So coral reefs are very sensitive. Coral bleaching is well known. I think some other speakers will be talking about it. I am not going to the details of it, but please log on to marine geo programs to get to know more about these. Next slide, please. But they are very sensitive, highly productive systems. The interface of you know ocean and the island systems like you have in Indonesia large scale land use conversion for palm oil plantations and their refineries and that way so palm oil refinery vast stretches of forests have to be destroyed for the sake of palm oil next slide so such situations are not uncommon but such areas wherever need to be replaced by fast growing native species to answer and address carbon sequestration issues to have the co2 and finally global carbon management next slide please so sometimes individual trees, massive trees support a number of biota. The Amazon rainforest, you have the Brazil nut tree, Bertholletia excelsa, okay, which itself is a microcosm. This belongs to Lecithidaceae, our Nagalinga uh, fa tree family, okay, next to Myrtaceae, the Goa family. It is a microcosm supporting See, one lakh invertebrate species, 378 reptile species, 400 amphibian species, three, 427 mostly arboreal mammal species, 1,300 birds and various kinds of fish, and 4,000 types of plants, including micro, macro epiphytes in its magnificent ecosystem in the Brazilian Amazon. So, that being the nature of it, and you have seen how much of Brazilian Amazon forests are being lost. So it causes a great concern. Next slide, please. So we need to- A little bit fast, sir. Yes, we have, uh, so we are two slides, I am completing. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. such a deforestation needs to be cut down. Next slide, please. So, and that concern we expressed in Nature Paper, how to, uh, you know, avert to biodiversity collapse. Next slide, please. So 
concern for environmental issues increase because of the consequence in climate change and its impact on biome biodiversity, ultimately food security and health as well. Thus, biodiversity conservation is essential for the welfare of all. Thank you very much for patient listening. If you have brief questions, if time permits, or Mr. Tarun can pass it on to my mail. Thank you very much, organizers, for the opportunity. And we try to cover uh, glimpses of various programs in this time frame. Good luck to all. Tarun. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for that very informative lecture. It was indeed different from the previous sessions because it was more about ecology and the uh, role of uh, ecology uh, and its contribution to the sustainable development. Uh, and also, um, you elucid elucidated the importance of uh, biodiversity con conservation. It was quite interesting uh, to see the rare photographs of uh, many species and fruits and trees. And uh, also very happy to see a lot of publications on this very relevant topic. So um, uh, on behalf of the department, uh, I extend my sincere gratitude to you, sir. Okay. So um, I think participants, you can uh, directly ask the questions. Uh, we can share the mail ID of uh, Dr. Pathasarathy so you can uh, ask him directly. Okay. Okay. So okay. it's Thank time. You. Thank you, sir. So it's time to uh, wind up today's session. Hope you all enjoyed uh, today's uh, session. And uh, uh, we know that uh, how difficult it was to go through this pandemic. So uh, experts say that climate change would be more worse and disastrous than pandemic. So it's just a trailer. Uh, climatic change uh, is going to be more disastrous than the pandemic which we had faced right now. So on that note, uh, let me conclude and we will be back tomorrow at sharp uh, 9.30. So until then, it's goodbye from all of us here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and before I wind up, let me tell you that the feedback link will be provided uh, in this uh, Zoom platform itself. Please uh, fill it and kindly uh, let us know about your feedback. So it's already given in the uh, chat box. Please fill it. Okay. Thank you. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody.